Hello, and welcome to a re-recording of a cheesy vlog review of Mass Effect 3. Uh, this is, as you might know, a series of reviews in a vlog-style format, in which basically I just sit here and give you my opinions without any real script or format or anything. I just basically talk, and then later delete the review and re-record it like right now, when I realize I've made several mistakes and not really has been as detailed as I wanted to. Uh, heck, in my last uh, review I accidentally called Mass Effect 3 Mass Effect 2 a couple of times, uh, but that's not really a huge major issue, really. Uh, let's just cut straight to the point and, you know, do my usual shooting from the hip kind of thing. Just telling you the honest-to-god truth about a game without, you know, letting fanboyism or you know, being concerned with being a critic too much. Uh, I'm not going to be an elitist, or I'm not going to be a fanboy. Those are two things that can burden reviewers a lot. Uh, so anyway, the key question. what is the uh, Is the game good, or is it bad? I know a large amount of you have probably already played and beaten the game, uh, and are probably pissed off, because the ending is you know, drawn a lot of controversy. Um, but in my opinion, the game does warrant at least a 7 out of 10 score. Uh, it has a lot of flaws to it, but it is a good game with a solid storyline that does misstep in a few places, most glaringly in the end. Uh, but it, gameplay-wise, while that also has some flaws, and entertainment-wise, it is a good game. It's a, a well above average 7 out of 10. Uh, <clears throat> that three is notched down by several key issues, and if the ending was vastly improved, I would actually bump it up to an eight, but only to an eight. Uh, so, you might be scratching your head. Uh, it was knocked down two points by things other than the ending. Uh, yes. For one, it was knocked down a point because the controls are basically were pre advertised as a marked improvement when they are actually pretty much unchanged and if anything the enhanced mobility being all programmed to one button uh, causes the system to be even clunkier but I will go into more detail of that in a few moments another point was knocked off by the fact that in several ways the storyline is can be lazy at times and or render Mass Effect 2 insignificant in a lot of ways. Uh, going into detail about that is uh, going to involve some spoilers. Uh, but yeah, let's get started. Uh, clear, concise thing? Yeah, it's a good game. I would recommend buying it, but be braced for a bad ending. Uh, it's a 7 out of 10 easily. It's a good game despite the flaws. And despite the huge fanboy rage, the ending will probably not ruin the entire series for you. If you just you know take it with a grain of salt, it it works. You know it's not a good ending. It's a bad ending, but it's not like oh my god, rip skull off and beat Bioware with it. Bad, like some people on the internet would have you believe. But we'll go into the ending later because that is spoiler. Terrific. In fact, there's so much I could say about the ending, I might make it in a completely different video. Uh, that's how freaking bad it is. Uh, but anyway, let's hit off some points. There's going to be some minor spoilers. I mentioned uh, clunky controls. Uh, the combat system, as I said, is basically unchanged from Mass Effect 2. They say, oh, you don't have to rely on cover for much, and it doesn't punish you as much for firing on the move. That's true. Even my sniper, frequently, once I'd gotten a really great sniper rifle, I'd frequently you know, approach a battlefield, headshot, 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 not even going into cover. Uh, but you will be bound to cover almost as much as you were in previous games. Uh, pretty much the exact same, like, this much less, you know, not much at all, uh, because there's a heck of a lot more enemies, and they're a heck of a lot smarter, so if you're not nailed to cover, you will get mowed down a lot of the time, uh, 
so yeah, it's still cover based. And uh, the increased mobility uh, does present problems because they make the error of making everything hit on one button. Uh, it's basic, especially clunky for the PC because it's, you know, spacebar, but it also can be clunky on console versions, I've heard. Especially considering, well, in Mass Effect 2, because there's not, like, dodge rolling or, you know, uh, it's, the sprinting is a little less finicky, you can just walk towards cover and be at a slight angle and you'll still go into cover. In Mass Effect 3, everything's on the spacebar button, so if you're not going straight, exactly flush straight with the cover, you will dodge roll along it frequently, uh, going to where you're rolling away from cover into the open and get mowed down, or nearly instantly killed. Uh, Sometimes in the heat of the moment you'll accidentally press spacebar twice or like hit the, you know, it's more prevalent on the PC version. The console version you're less, less likely to double tap, but on the PC version you can easily in the heat of the moment double tap the cover button and vault over the cover by accident into a wide open space where you get mowed down. Uh, while I do enjoy the dodge rolly thingy, the problem it causes where you, ca you roll along cover can be a problem and even th you might say hey with practice you'll get used to it but I'm most of the way through a second playthrough of this game and I'm still making the same mistakes so it's an interface issue it's finicky as hell uh, and on the uh, PC version melee attacking tends to be a little clunky uh, maybe it's, that's just me that is probably just me um, so yeah, the controls, not all that different from Mass Effect 2, and they can be a little clunky with the added functions on one button. Uh, dodge roll should have somehow been done differently, and put it on a different button, and they should have made it where you can more easily slip into cover. Those are the two most glaring issues with it, where you, you dodge roll along cover. That's the most obvious and debilitating thing about the clunkiness. Uh, now we're going to venture a little more into spoiler territory, because I'm going to give some more specific examples of missteps in the storyline. You're given less party members, and I can understand that because it's not uh, it's less about the personal stories of your companions and more about the galaxy as a whole. And even the stories of your, you know, companions that are in the game are they basically them handling a crisis for their people. Uh, except in, you know, Caden or Ashley's case, you know, the Vermeyer survivor from the first game comes back. Uh, and theirs is more of a personal level thing, as you make up with them or, you know, diss them one way or the other. That's the most personal it gets. Uh, there's an immediate issue when they introduce a new character to your group, and when instead of bringing an old one back. I can understand why they would do this storyline-wise, because it's a fresh face and gives you someone to relate to, and... Uh, it's a new soldier, a young soldier, a young buck kind of guy, and Shepard in this game is kind of presented as, you know, he's kind of getting old, even though he's not, uh, not all that old. He's kind of getting to where he's an old soul, and he's been in this war so long, he's the hardened veteran, and here's this new guy, J uh, James Vega, who's, you know, kind of a, a new at this, even though he's pretty, you know, he's experienced, he's still, you know, learning the lessons Shepard learned a while ago like making hard decisions and stuff. It's nice. I appreciate it. But if you're going to have him con uh, if you're going to have him in there, don't make him uh, put him there in addition to like somebody filling that slot. It, I can see people complaining about like this new guy when I could have Rex or I could have Grunt or I could have any number of my companions from Mass Effect 2 in that spot. And you might recall earlier, as I bring up any of my companions from Mass Effect 2 in that slot, that I mentioned earlier that several aspects of the storyline make Mass Effect 2 pointless. Uh, collector base? Doesn't matter what you did with it. Not at all. Doesn't affect a damn thing. And that's the key linchpin decision of the entire fracking second game in the series, and it doesn't matter. It makes it a little easier to get the best ending. That's it. By a thousand points, which is piddly. You know, it doesn't matter. 
at all. It's barely even brought up. And guess what? With the exception of Garrus and Tally, none, not a single one of your companions from Mass Effect 2 join your party as a squad member. Sure, they'll be around during a mission talking to you, but none of them, not a single one, aside from Garrus and Tally, join your group. Therefore, none of the relationships you build lead to a party member, you know, with you the whole dang way. And Garrus and Tally, those are Mass Effect 1 companions. Uh, mind you, they do draw, draw attention to the fact that Garrus and Tally have been with you the whole dang time. In fact, I like how they built that up. Uh, but yeah, every new character in Mass Effect 2, they ain't coming back. They'll be around for... they'll... Uh, talk to you on the Citadel occasionally and meet up with you. You'll run one m mission alongside them. And some characters more than others you'll talk to more. Uh, and some of the romance options in the uh, from Mass Effect 2, y you are sh shit out of luck. Uh, if you did not r romance um, a Mass Effect 1 character, you're out of luck. And some might argue if you didn't uh, ro romance any of the original romance options, the three, Caden, Ashley, or Liara, you're out of luck, because those three get a heck of a lot more detail. I disagree, because Garrus and Tally are also reasonably fleshed out. But if you romance the Mass Effect 2 character, you are out of luck, because they will only talk to you once or twice. Usually only once, and usually only twice sometimes only like one time and in one case you don't even stay with them basically you break up uh, and I like the fact that Thane's back Thane did not die between the two games and he's given a good send-off that's nice and it concludes well but then you have Jacob I won't go into details but if you romanced Jacob I feel so sorry for you. He doesn't die. It's worse than that. Uh, spoilers. He dates someone else and has kids with them and moves on during the between the two games. So you're crap out of luck. Yeah. Uh, and if you romance Miranda... Sure, it gets conclusion, but it's basically just she's off to the side. None of the Mass Effect 2 companions will come with you. So, they might as well not even be there, except for popping up side quests. Oh, and if you want to match Jack, you're kind of uh, out of luck too, because she doesn't even get really a conclusion. You meet her, you realize she's doing well, you dance with her at a club, you never see her again until you talk with her at the end of the game via hologram, not even in person. You know, you don't get any nookie, uh, which is just screwed the hell up. Yeah, so several parts of the storyline make Mass Effect 2 elements completely useless, uh, with the exception of the Arrival DLC. If you did the Arrival DLC, it will be mentioned several times and come up a lot. The events of that. Well, not a lot, but like three times, which is more significant than a lot of other elements of Mass Effect 2. Uh, so, yeah. And also, in several ways, the story is lazy, because uh, they just kind of throw, you know, like, oh... Here's a companion from Mass Effect 2 that just happens to show up and, you know, has this mission that's related to stuff that they did in Mass Effect 2. Uh, or, you know, stuff like that. And it's kind of, the programming is a little lazy because the issue of pulling out a weapon during a cutscene that you don't use or don't have equipped is even more glaring, considering you can equip anything and can customize your weapons blank weapon I don't use. You know. Seriously. you think they would have fixed that by now. It don't, it don't require that much code to freaking say check uh, for heaviest weapon when you want a rifle style weapon. 
A little line of code. Oh, it'll check for my heaviest weapon. I play an infiltrator. Pull out my sniper rifle. And I need a rifle weapon. Oh, I need a pistol weapon for a short range. Ah, pistol y thing. I'm wielding an SMG. Pick lightest weapon. Check for lightest weapon. Have him pull that out. It don't require a heck of a lot of coding. I'm not a programmer, but even I know that much about coding. They say that would not take a darn l lot of coding. A couple megabytes at most. A couple hundred megabytes, maybe. A pittance, comparing to the coding that would go into other aspects of the game. And they haven't fixed it in three whole dang games. In fact, in three, as I said, it's more glaring than ever. And, you know, I understand the script was leaked. And they had to, like, rush the things and, like, tweak some stuff. Uh, but the ending in the leaked script hasn't actually changed that much. Uh, a couple of things that are rumored to have changed a little that would make things a little better. But, yeah. This review is running a longer time than I anticipated it would. Although I did say I might include my opinion of the ending in another video. And I'm going to do that. This is 16 minutes already. The ending is bad. The game, despite all the flaws I've been prattling on about for the past 16 and a half minutes, it's still a good game, and I would still recommend buying it, but brace yourself for a, a bad ending uh, that you might just fanboy rage about. If you're prone to fanboy raging about bad endings, uh, brace yourself, because you will fanboy rage about this ending. If you, you know, just, like, take it at face value and, you know, okay, it, it's bad, it doesn't really present any closure, and, uh, anything like that, and looking at other endings on YouTube, they're all the same, uh, none of my choices matter to the ending, uh, it's the journey is good. The ending, we'll get to that in the next video. It's gonna take the whole 20 minutes, probably. Yeah. Cheese of Ages, signing out.